Hey, good morning. If you watched in the last couple of weeks, you know that I asked uh, you guys if you had any interesting projects to share that maybe we could work on on the channel. And uh, I have to say, I've been just astonished and uh, very gratified by the response. I've gotten a bunch of really interesting projects in. And the uh, first one we're gonna work on is this. Uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I, I don't even know what it is from Dave who sent this in. So this is a rotational molding project. This is big. You're not going to want to cast this thing in a giant solid chunk of resin. That's for sure. It would weigh a lot. It weighs a lot anyway. It's about two pounds, but it's hollow. It's hollow for sure. And we're going to make our copy of it hollow. This one is unique in that it's a much more complex object to mold. This is going to be a four part mold. It's going to require a base. It's going to require two blankets of rubber backed up by two shells or mothers of a rigid material, which in my case is a brush on polyurethane. Um, but then it's got a really interesting problem. It's got a, uh, a uh, cup holder, but I think that Dave said he believes that this was actually a toilet brush, <laughs> toilet brush holder. Um, but anyway, uh, that's not what he's gonna use it for, but it does have this void down in here. So we're gonna have to have four pieces a base and the base is gonna, and the bottom part is really a base and a plug. So there's two pieces there to be made. We're gonna have to have an insert, which is gonna consist of a rubber blanket insert and a plug inside of there, and then the two shells. Let's get started with the base because if you start with the bottom, you can always work your way up, right? So I'm just gonna trace out where I want this guy to live on this base. I get it? Yeah, perfect, okay. And this shape is important because this part of this base is actually going to be a casting surface for the bottom of this. So any little flaws like this hole, no big deal. We're gonna patch in this and that, and you'll see what we do with it. I made the base, got the guy situated on it just the way I like it. This is also the surface where the pour spout is gonna be. I'm gonna make a plug for this pour spout, uh, but I'd like it to be one of those screw-in threaded type plugs, and there are a lot of work to hand make. I'm not doing that. Far better. <laughs> just, just take a bottle, because this bottle has exactly the size and the threads and the whatnot that I want. So I'm going to use this bottle to make this plug. Okay, now let's flip it. Should be right on. Yep, we're right on spot. Here we go. Beautiful. To make the blanket mold, I'm gonna need some strips of rubber. And to make those, I'm gonna make a mold form that will allow me just to pour strips of rubber. Look at that, came very close. So this piece is gonna ride on here like that. And this piece is gonna ride on here like that. Like that. And that is gonna form a strip mold. We'll begin making these molds by gluing these little end pieces in. Sometimes super glue can really speed you along, let me tell you. All right, I got the strip mold all glued up and in the clamps and now it's ready to come out. And won't that be a laugh riot? All right, let's get this quarter inch mold made. No time like the present. So let's slap some glue on here. The old stick in the, stick in the jug business with the glue. It's not rocket science doing this gluing. So these little end pieces are my spacers. They go on the ends like that, like this. I love these little Irwin clamps. I have a bunch of them. I use them all the time. They're perfect for a lot of light duty stuff that I wind up doing around here in the shop. So I use these all the time. And now I just want to put a clamp here on the ends. And then this one needs to come out. Go like this. Okay, I'm gonna speed through this next section of the video. And the reason for that is I'm making the mold of the plug based on this bottle top. But here's the thing, I, I had this brilliant idea of using that plastic cup as a mother and then pouring a nice thin, tiny little 
a ring of rubber in there, kind of a bl miniature blanketed mother mold. And I thought, boy, what a winner of an idea. Let's see if this works. This should work out great. Uh, but it failed. And the reason that it failed was, do you see that cup that I'm pouring into? To get the rubber out and the bottle out of there, I had to break that cup. And it turns out those cups are not all identical. They're not the same. They look is the same, but they're not. So when I went to put the rubber blanket back into a new cup, it didn't fit. It was warped. And as a result, my threads were warped. And as a result, it wasn't going to work because you can't have warped threads. They won't screw into a part that fits them. They just won't work. This is for the insert that goes inside the cup section of the mold. This part right here, this goes into here. And my original idea was I was going to turn this out of sign foam or some material. And then I realized this cup is exactly the right size. Welded them together with sticky wax. And now I can uh, just fill it with resin. No work at all, which is the way I like it. Let's go ahead and pour this. Let's fill it all the way to here, minimally. That's a pretty good amount. Okay, we'll see if we're going to build that up more or what's going to happen with it. We don't know, but I think for now it's going to be just fine. Let's run this thing into the tank, shall we? One thing that can be really useful is uh, when you have rotational molds on each half of the mold, is to have cleats on it. And the cleats are designed basically to give a hold to rubber bands. And this is about the size of the rubber band I'm going to use to be holding the mold together. So I'm going to make, I'm going to sculpt a little wax cleat. So let's draw it out. Let's talk about the lazy man's way to draw it out. Can you see that even? I'll go ahead and go over to the bandsaw and cut that out and come back to you. All right, here's our little cleat roughed out. It's just a little round cleat. So now we just go in and sculpt it up. What it's going to do is it's going to give us a tie down point for the rubber bands to loop around. And that is going to make it very, very easy for us to secure the halves of the mold together. So I took this thing out of the tank and it's all ready to go. So let's take a look. I'm excited to see my beautiful plug. Let's see what happens. Oh, ooh, that popped right off of there. Nice. I use old resin to make this because this, uh, this seemed like a part that didn't need to be made out of new res. So there's our plug. This thing should work like a champ and it is going to fit down in here like this. Right in like that, way right in there. Superior, boy, that's gonna be perfect. I mixed up a nice tub of resin, got it good and stirred. Mixed it up nice. Now we'll go ahead and de-air it. Get it into the old de-airing tank. Okay, here we go. There we go. Take it out. And let's bring it over here. Beautiful. Pour this child. As always, fill in from the bottom up. So there's quite a bit of preliminary work that you got to do to make a mold like this because there's a lot of different kinds of parts to it. So we're getting there and I think it's coming together perfect. It's the next morning and uh, 24 hours have gone by. Our molds are hard, beautiful. We can cut these things open. This one I'm going to have to make some resin castings of. So let's get that done. So let's get it cut open nice and jaggedy as we do. So let's open that up. I'm hopeful that you can at least somewhat see what I'm doing here. And this mold is good. Very nice. Okay. While you guys were out busy living your lives, I was working in here prepping things for what we need next. Well, I cast up a whole slew of these boys. You can see that. Got six of them. And now we're going to make a little gang mold. So I made a base for the gang mold and I made the walls for the gang mold. So now we've got a bunch of parts. Oh, the other thing I did was we're gonna make a second attempt <laughs> at casting this bottle. It was a fail, but it was a worthy fail. I think this is gonna work better. So I made a new mold case for this. And this is ready to wax. This is the base for the, for the sculpture itself is gonna sit on and this is ready to wax. So it's wax time. All right, heat gun. Gotta have, one thing you gotta have in this life is a heat gun. Without a heat gun, you're, you're really nothing, nothing. And this, oh, this is my beautiful beeswax, which has the red pigment in it, the orange pigment. So we can all see what I'm doing easy. So you get the point. I'm just going to slap a co coat of beeswax on this. I'll come back to you when that's all done. Take these smaller molds. 
just set that down at the risk of burning up my tabletop. Get this thing well waxed. All it needs, coat of wax. I was out of beeswax, so I broke out the hefty bag, <laughs> hefty bag of beeswax pearls. I feel like you guys needed to see me melt the beeswax. It's a lot of fun. Get down in here, get the beeswax all melted up. It's hot down in there. Not going to take long to get that melted. Don't want to cook it. As soon as it starts to smoke, you know it's too hot. All right, good. You get the idea about that. All right, let's coat this base. I don't want to coat down in that hole yet because I got to pour rubber into there. Hopefully tomorrow. So we got to be careful with that. Let's get this well waxed. Why do we wax? Because rubber and resin love beeswax. They will not stick to it. They just won't. I don't know why. Ask the bees. I do not know why, but they don't. Okay. I think we have everything pretty well done. All right. We got our little uh, production uh, mold of the cleats ready to go. <laughs> they look pretty good. Now we'll just uh, pop this box on. Which way does it go? Out. Goes like this. Don't burn yourself. Holy moly. Should be able to pop this on, I hope. Hope the wax didn't screw me over and make it too tight. Ah, look at that. Fits like a champion. All right, let's seal this thing up so it don't leak and we're good to go. We are good to go. Just a seal job around the edges with the old waxer and we're done and we'll pour rubber next. I poured the gang mold of the uh, little cleats and it's looking good. And I'm redoing the bottle mold so we can remake this plug. And here's how what I'm doing that's different. I've uh, sealed off the top of the bottle with wax and cardboard and put some ease release on it and put, put a, some rubber on top of it. And I put rubber in the bottom of the mold and then I cut some chunkies of rubber, as you can see. And those chunkies of rubber are cured and they're gonna be the thing that keeps the bottle. They're gonna st the bottle's gonna stand on that. And, uh, and that's gonna be able to make be able to make a rubber base. So let's flood those really well. And we know they're centered in the middle. So what they're going to do is they're going to prop the bottle up. I'm just going to put it in there like this at an angle, push the air out underneath it, and get it to stand up in the mold on top of the rubber pieces. And hopefully it let's will do that. Around. And it should stand just fine. Does standing up perfectly good. I sanded this plug nice and smooth. I didn't like the finish that it had on it, so I just sanded it over on the big wheel and hand sanded it. I put a flat, and that's going to key it so it can't like go in in weird ways. I'm just gonna this is a waste mold, so I'm gonna waste it. It's not made to be reused. See how beautiful that wax paper comes off of that rubber? Let's pop that off of there. Nice, pop right off. Get this thing cut through. There you go. There you go. Well, I didn't quite get it, did I? Okay, there we go. All right, nice, got the sides off. Now, let's see about getting this bottle off of the bottle. Just come on. There you go. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Why did that happen? That is not what we wanted. I can't win on this bottle mold, can I? Holy crap. That was not what we wanted to have happen. What happened to my spacers that were supposed to hold it up? As you can see, the bottle fell all the way through the bottom. You just never know when you try stuff out, what's gonna happen? <laughs> you never know. Disasters will strike. It looks like, let me see, is it, look, is it gonna hold its shape? It looks like it's gonna hold its shape. We'll make it work one way or the other. All right, let's cut this mold open. Okay, now we just have to determine where to cut this. The uh, vents are on this side. I always follow the vents down, that's my rule. 
There goes the compressor. And that's one. A little shape like this is really simple to cut. Not difficult to cut. Small, simple, one sprue, one vent, not difficult. So that's good, makes it easy. And they pop right out, so they're gonna come out really easy. No problems at all. Just the way I like it. No worries, no hurries. These castings I know because I poured a bunch of them. I like six grams each, but just to verify that, what I'll do is I'll put them in a cup and I'll weigh all six of them at once. Should come up to about 36 grams, so it's probably gonna be about a 40 gram batch to pour six of these. Get this well mixed. All right, no time like the present. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Gotta get cracking. Okay, we got seven of those poured. The rest we can just dump into here. Oh my God, the power of math. You gotta love it. Just the right amount. Fill it up, top it off. On this one here, all I did was to put it on a put the mold on a flat, bigger mold to make a bottom. And so should work out. Let's try it. Let's get them in the pots. Uh, these are ready to take out of the mold. Let's do it. This one we know works. Beautiful. But I have a high degree of faith that they're all gonna work. Six, all right. Now look, just fine as expected. Uh, what I did was I took an old, big old giant mold with a flat side and uh, I used it as my bottom. If these are deformed, <laughs> I am gonna be pissed if this didn't work. So let us see. Oh yeah, nice. Arrow straight, woo! <laughs> Perfect, perfect, it came out great. All right, second time the charm. Sometimes you try something and it didn't work. But this is much more reliable, worked fine. There's a little bit of flash to clean up. I'm gonna put a handle on it. And now, whoop, whoop, I got a screw in plug for the bottom of our rotation mold. So now the only thing left to do on this base is gonna be to fill this little gasket. We're gonna make a ring of rubber and let's do it. And I did not seal the wood in the base. So what that means is it's probably going to bond tight to the wooden base, to the, which is the whole idea. So let's see if all my, my most wondrous plans work out. You never know, <laughs> should work out. Should work out just fine. I'm gonna have just enough rubber to fill this mold up perfectly. All right, nice. Look at that, birdie. So we're right at the point where we can start to do the mother and shell. We're also out of time for this week. I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. Thanks for subscribing. I, I, this, my subscribers are going up every week. Uh, welcome if you're new. And I'm so thrilled that you're here. Thanks so much if you have already subscribed. If you saw anything here you got questions about, don't hesitate to ask me. I'm very uh, pleased by the responses and the comments. People are asking questions and making comments. And uh, I really enjoy hearing from you. Uh, see you next week.